And good evening, everyone. It is uh, Tuesday, June 1st, uh, 2021, and I'd like to call to order the regular finance and personnel committee meeting of the Village of North Hudson. Roll call, please. Trustees Nelson? Here. Pike? Here. President Wecken? Here. Trustee Zeiss? Here. All righty then. Item two is minutes, regular finance, personnel committee meeting from 4 May. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Uh, any amendments, corrections, or uh, additions? Hearing none, all in favor of the minutes as presented, signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. All right. Opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Claims review and recommendation. Uh, Stan, can I move to approve the June 1, 2021 non recurring claims of $34,768.15? Thank you, Kirk. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Brian. Is there comments or questions? Anything out of ordinary, Melissa? No, this one doesn't include any big expenditures at all. It's just kind of the usual bills. Other yeah, than kind of nice. real quick on the capital fund, the 415 for 5382, that does include um, the cost of temporary easements up for the Wisconsin Street North project. But that's about the only thing out of the ordinary. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Brian? Yes. Kirk? Yes. Tim? Yes. And I'll also make it unanimous. Yes. And, uh, heck, we did better than five minutes. I'll declare this meeting <laughs> adjourned at 6.32. And good evening, everyone. It is uh, Tuesday, June 1st, and I'd like to call the regular board meeting of the Village of North Hudson to order. Uh, I have a short invocation. This is Lord protect the freedom we still experience in our nation today. Please heal our land and give us wisdom on how to move forward. Roll call, please. Trustees Matz. Present. McGurin. Present. Nelson. Here. Noonan. Here. Pike. Here. President Wecken. Here. Here. Trustees Ice. Here. Thank you. Uh, item two, review the and approve minutes from the regular board meeting of 4 May. Move to approve. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? A second. <clears throat> and Amy had her hand up too, so we got that doubled up. Okay. Is there any additions, correcting, corrections, or amendments to the uh, minutes as presented? Hearing none, uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. Item three is comments from the floor, opportunity for residents to make the board aware of topics, issues, opportunities are on or not on today's agenda. Is there anyone that isn't on the agenda that... Uh, has there anything they'd like to bring up? I don't see anyone on my screen. And the sun's going to move here in a couple of minutes behind the next tree, so I won't be so washed out. Just uh, bear with me. I'm out in the deck, and it's too nice to be indoors. Uh, okay, but item four, except, exceptions to the noise ordinance during Highway 35 project, discussion and possible approval. And I'd like to move to temporarily suspend the prohibition on construction work during certain quiet hours as set forth in section 70 6 parentheses D to allow construction to proceed on the Highway 35 project outside of the restricted hours. This suspension relates only to the Highway 35 project. This temporary suspension will be for five days. They may not be consecutive. And the contractor will give the village administrator two weeks notice prior to exceeding the current ordinance. Thank you, Brian. Brian. Second. Second. 
Okay, all kinds of seconds. I uh, hope Jessica, she can sort them out, I'm pretty sure. Okay, any further discussion on this? I think everybody got the statement about uh, how this uh, cutting works and everything like that. And, you know, I'd like to you know make sure that the public knows that uh, it is not going to be four or five days in a row. Uh, there could be a month in between, two, three weeks in between. So, and uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate and we won't have uh, to worry about issues until all hours of the morning. Okay. Can, can do we have any clarification that two weeks notice prior to exceeding the current ordinance? I think it, I, I felt partially it was dependent on the temperature, right? And are they going to know two weeks in advance whether, you know, there's going to be cutting at 90 degree weather? You know, you understand my question there? I mean, I, I mean, I got, I, I feel that, they're gonna, that wind is going to be shorter than two weeks for them to know when they're going to be cutting and not cutting. <clears throat> so they're going to be cutting and they will know um, two weeks prior to putting the pavement down. Um, and so they'll be able to give us that notice. They know when they're going to pour. They don't know exactly right now, but they know uh, they will know when they're going to pour. And what they said to me today was they will be able to give her a two week notice before they would possibly have to cut into our quiet hours. Yeah, so they're given like a two week notice of when they could cut. Right. Okay. The word could is the key because, you know, that it was temperature, relieving the stress, depending on the temperature, when to do it, so forth. That's right. I thought we, we, you know, leading up to this point with the main, main discussion of why they need to do it at night. <clears throat> if the temperatures are hot enough, they will have to go out there and uh, do it into the wee hours of the morning. Correct. Because it cures too fast, then is that the, or not fast enough? Or I mean, I'm not a concrete guy. I'm just telling you right. what they told me. No, and that's you know that's kind of what they've stressed all along is that. Uh, you know, they don't have any, you know, so, they just the need the windows. Yeah, the next step stands. So the um, village administrator, two weeks notice prior to exceeding the current ordinance. So, okay, then what do we do after that? What do you mean? Do we notify the residents that's going to happen or do they? Well, I mean, Melissa's, Melissa's going to post it up on, uh, you know, where the rest of the 35 construction information is. Okay. Correct. Melissa, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And just a thought, maybe if they aren't not able to give a full two weeks, I don't know if you want to put a minimum of like minimum of a five day notice up to well, two week notice. Yeah. Or even, I mean, potentially maybe I would say that's something maybe done a two day notice. I mean, you tell them two days are going to know it's going to be 90 degrees weather because how can you uh, judge temperature? Maybe you can. I mean, and depending on when they're pouring the cement and everything, that's what I meant. By as far as I think, initially the proposal was there gives a two day notice, and now it's a two week. I mean, so I just don't understand. You know, I, I'm questioning that. Uh, my hope was so I've also talked a little bit with them that once they give us the two week notice, the, I've been asking and emailing questions about stuff like that. So I think that they're going to give me a quick notice. Well, I'll send it to Melissa and post on Facebook too, where you know two days before you have a better chance of knowing the weather, but even with two days, you're not going to really be able to give a, a, a standard shout, like what day it's supposed to be. But uh, that's something I'm kind of working on trying to figure out the proper times and dates of it. The way I understood it is they will know two weeks in advance of when they're going to be cutting. And that's going to be loud, whether it's during normal quiet hours or not. And that's what they're going to try and give us a notice on. And as to whether they go into the wee hours of the morning, that is going to be totally temperature dependent. So this is a broader way of looking at it, I guess, Tim. Okay. But you do understand my questioning because as yes. you know, the yes. two weeks now just confuses me now because uh, she's going to post it two weeks saying they're going to be doing this. And yet they might not even do it at all. Yet they could be cutting it and, well, they're going to cut it. That's what I'm saying. They're going to cut it. It's just well, a matter the of time. residents like to know closer to when they're going to be cutting it. I mean, instead of two weeks in advance, 
you know, you don't understand my question behind that. I mean, I'm living. I know we're going to hear down here. Where I live. To be honest with you, everyone's going to be hearing it. But yeah, I think. Well, <laughs> the guy was trying to say today that we will know two weeks in advance okay. of when they're going to pour. When they're going right. to, yeah. But, but they're, they're not going to pour. They're not going to pour if it's if it's downpour raining for right. three days straight over that right. that time window is what Tim's getting at. That's what I'm getting at. You train to depend on weather. A lot of this is. I mean, that's what they told us. I just think it's not clear enough to me. That's my feeling behind it, especially coming out of the last meeting when we talked about the two day type of notice. So are are any of those guys on here? Barry's on. Barry. Yep. Do you can you? Uh, elaborate to Tim's part of the question. So when we get, we get notice that we're going to pave, the first thing that's going to start is we're going to set line on the road and then we're going to trim the roadway with all intention of when we're paving at that. As soon as we set line and start trimming, we know when we're going to pave We're we're within a day or two of paving weather will play a big dictator on it. Um, and once we start paving, you know, we'll know based on weather when we're going to saw based on cure time. And I can't put that any farther in advance because we don't know if it'll be cool or hot. If it's real hot, we'll get on it earlier and we'll be done earlier. If it's cool, overcast, it's going to get on later. It's going to be done later. But my point behind that, Barry, is just I don't understand the two weeks notice. Right. I, I don't understand more if you told me you had two days notice. <laughs> You understand that point, Barry? Well, I can tell you approximately when we're going to be there on the schedule. I mean, when they're putting gravel down and I'm putting curb in and sidewalk, I'll know approximately when I'm going to be pouring. It's not going to be pinpointed to the exact day because there's a lot of variables. You know, the meeting this morning is I'm supposed to be able to start pouring curb possibly end of next week. And I'm going to put my curb in and my sidewalk in, and then I'll have a good idea of when I'm going to go. But it all based on weather over that period. I guess Tim's just asking that if you could try to, during those two-week period, give us more of a specific date that we could inform the, the town more would be very helpful. Yeah, oh. we can try. I mean, but it won't be, you know, it's a three-day window at that point, three to four-day window, you know, that far out. Three to four day windows better than two weeks is what we're kind of trying to say. Yep, we can do that. Every at the weekly meetings we talk about it. You know what we're doing. We'll know exactly in that weekly meeting where we're going to be the week before and the week of. Any further discussion? I still think it's really unclear what this two weeks means. Do we just need to take two weeks out? Like two weeks seems irrelevant. It sounds more like there's a very specific system until pouring and that that's very easy to identify unless there's a serious weather change. And then the uncertainty is the time for cutting between pouring and cutting, but it's still a pretty short window. But I would agree with Tim that I don't really understand what this two weeks is signifying. Maybe we just need to get rid of it. That And Barry, that came from uh, Tony. When I was talking to Tony today. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, it's hard. The two weeks is, you know, it's a scheduling thing. We schedule out, you know, three weeks in our meetings. And that's where Tony's coming from. In two weeks, we have a good idea where we're going. Realistically, to pinpoint the day I'm going to pave is the day I start setting line. And that's about three to four days. Uh, that's That, to me, varies. It's sufficient. They're, so they're, we're, we're, we're changing the ordinance for the noise after the yep. nine o'clock. So, and that's where we left last meeting with more toward that type of time frame. Yep. So, do you want them to? Do you guys want to amend this to say three to four days instead of two weeks? We'll give them a week. They meet on Mondays. I mean, they know their activities. They meet every Monday. Go through the project. What's happening that week? I mean. Um, I would it think could would be a doing. week. It, yeah, but you got to understand that is it might be the previous Monday that we're starting to set line and trimming, and we might pour the following Tuesday. So Monday, you know, every Monday we will give an update of what we're doing, you know, whether that's a week notice plus or exactly a week, you know, but we'll know on every Monday what our plan is at the meeting.
Anybody else? So can we just leave it more wide open? Saying I, I, I can let you know. a weekly update on our website, please watch. And cutting will take place approximately, you know, three to four days. Three yeah. to four days after pouring. And Nick, just have people watch for that. And then once we know, we can post it again on the website for people who look. I, I can give you weekly updates at the meeting of what we're doing. You know, on every Monday, we can give you a weekly update. You know, the city's there, Cedar's there, you know, to we can actually send it off to the city of what we're planning to do and how we're doing it. So are you guys wanting me to amend that from 14 to three to four days? I don't think that's I think fair. What he was try trying to do was to, he was giving us a, a big window like, all right, look, we got to order concrete. We got to have all this stuff in place. And uh, he would, you know, I'm sure, you know, everybody, the, the factors are there to, to, you know, with weather and stuff like that. But, you know, like you said, every week he's going to give an update. And I know the chief's been attending. I'm sure Patrick's been attending. I mean, uh, we will know, I mean, uh, every Monday what exactly is going to go on. Is that correct, Barry? That is correct. And I, I think he's asked for the two weeks, and I think he understands that all we're asking for is more of a specific time during that two weeks, which it seems like he hears us and will let us know that. So, yes, we're giving him two weeks, but, yes, he's going to give us a more specific time during that two weeks. That is correct. Thank you. I can ask you a question. If you could take a look at what you read as the ordinance, Brian, I felt like the two weeks was a minimum time frame, and I'm not sure that what you're talking about fits with what the ordinance read. Um, I said move to temporarily suspend the prohibition on construction work during certain quiet hours as set forth in section 70-6 to allow construction to proceed on Highway 35 project outside of the restricted hours. This suspension relates only to the Highway 35 project. This temporary suspension will be for five days and they may not be consecutive. And the contractor will give the village administrator two weeks notice prior to exceeding the current ordinance. So they're gonna exceed the nine o'clock, right, Mark? That's, that's what he's saying there, right? <clears throat> that's what I'm hearing, but I guess, I don't know that Barry will be able to give two weeks notice to the administrator is what I'm hearing in the meeting. So I don't know if you wanna say a week. Right. Or just, we, that's the verbiage that I'm getting hung up on as far as making sure that we, if you put the ordinance in place, that it actually is. Solid. Right. So you want, you would like us to amend it to one week? I, I, I would go with that since the communication happens every Monday and, and it, it, it shortens that window, you know. Okay. Understood. So I, uh, I'll read, I'll amend the motion to say, uh, the contractor will give the village administrator one week notice prior to exceeding the current ordinance. And I'll need a second, I guess. <laughs> Whoever seconded your original motion will have to agree to that. Who is? I'll second, I guess, or Kirk. I think we was... tied. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, I believe we can do a all in favor of the uh, ordinance or adjustment to the ordinance as amended. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. <clears throat> hearing none. Motion carries. Okay. Item. Uh, Five is the 2021-2022 Class A slash B alcohol beverage licenses, cigarette licenses, and amusement permits. Approval requested. Move to approve. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? I second that. Thank you, Amy. Discussion. There was a question that was posed about uh, Cozy not being in here and Melissa 
I don't know if you heard that, that we assume that, you know, when they, I don't know, it's just being turned over to them. So I, it, do they have to come back and do one for themselves or? No. So what happened was um, Cozy is off of there right now. Their current license goes through June 30th. So they do still have a license. Um, so that it, they're okay through the June 30th. Um, there was some co contradictory information on one of the forms that was filled out uh, by wow. the new agent um, that was discovered late. And so we just, I need to reach out to that person tomorrow and get some clarification on that. Um, have him fix uh, one of the forms um, for the background check. Um, so I will reach out to that person tomorrow. Uh, the chief and I will, you know, get that corrected. And then um, it may have to come back. It may require a special board meeting um, in June to get that one passed. But yeah, there was just, it, it takes a while to get all the information in from all the bars and then to get everything. <laughs> There's a lot of information that's missing um, usually. So it takes a while to get it all together. So it was kind of discovered late today so that's why that one's not on there but they do still have a license through the end of june for sure so that will that one will come back okay and uh there paul now we this one we don't have to read every one of the licenses right can we do this with the uh, uh suspended rules or we need to uh um, Melissa and I talked about this and she said there's, there's a list included in the information mm -hmm. as, and you can just make that list part of the motion. You don't have to read every single one. <clears throat> okay. Melissa, the, the type of license that remained the same from, from the last year, no, no, no changes or modifications to any of them. To any of these renewals? Correct. Uh, well, I mean, Gov's changed. Um, cozy will change. Um, but I believe the agent changed for the village in, but that one, uh, the paperwork all worked out. Okay. So that that's about it. Then, Otherwise they were basically the same. And the tech license, of course, so what they're selling to remain the same as far as the classes and everything, right? The classes are all the same. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yep. And you're just going to want to reflect in the minutes, the names of the licenses that were granted. Okay. And uh, see, we, we, we motion has been yes. made and seconded. Uh, no further discussion. Uh, all in favor? Uh, of Stan, the I will abstain from this vote for being the owner of Cubs. Thank you, Kurt. Is there? Okay. All in favor of the uh, uh, licenses being approved, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Item six. Appeal of operator's license. Denial of Jennifer Groves. Discussion possible approval. Is there a motion? And just so you're aware, she is on the meeting. If you have questions, it's already on there someplace. Yep. Okay. So, how I don't have a uh, motion here. <clears throat> motion here. So, I don't know how to make a motion for this. Move to approve, or and then we go to discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Move to approve. There's a second. Second. Thank you, Kirk. Discussion. Chief, you got any uh, background for us that you'd like to share? I'll just bring forward that originally I issued a memorandum to the village administrator back on April 8th after reviewing the application and the information in the application. Uh, I had recommended a denial at that point, which uh, the administrator had followed through on. And then uh, there is the appeal that's before you. You have the letter from the applicant and I believe um, also submitted by the applicant was a probation violation order from the County of Lesueur in the state of Minnesota uh, that showed some information about the fact that there is um, there was an extension of 
uh, our probationary period that was a, a sentencing from the um, uh, DWI that was a conviction out of the state of Minnesota. Um, the information that I had used for my denial was the fact that under the current a resolution that's in place for me to make some decisions on an event that occurs within the last three years prior to the application, which the DWI did fall within those three years. And then also that there was some incorrect information listed on the application was the beginning of that. Um, since the application appeal has come through, I did have a chance to um, reach out through means that are open to the public on the Minnesota website and was able to duplicate the information that the applicant provided. So I can tell you that that information is accurate on the extension of probation. Um, and then just did look up the information on the actual uh, conviction. Um, I was able to reach out to her probation agent and to discuss the reasons for that. And obviously she can contest or confirm the information that I'm providing and speak with the probation agent out of LeSueur County. Uh, for the applicant and it looks like the violation was just it wasn't a an additional charge or anything any new charges just that there was some lack of communication with the agent or there were some issues where there was not um, the systematic communication that was required by the agent and then also that there is a required mad impact panel that was required by the court that had not yet been completed um, so that's the information that I have moving into this appeal for the board to consider. And obviously the applicant has the right to appeal to you and has the right to, uh, to talk to you about the decision that you're about to make. And so unless there's other questions for me, I will uh, mute myself and allow the applicant to speak. Uh, one question, question, Chief. How long is this suspension of ever uh, going to? I'm not trying to find, trying to find it within the documents. So she's trying to suspend us, but how long is it for if, if uh... the probation was extended for one year and that will go through April 14th of 2022. 2022. Thank you. <clears throat> Though, yeah, the only reason that um, I did not complete the mad class yet was because of COVID. So, but that will be completed as soon as I can. Okay. Any one else? Amy? So would it be possible to, if people do want to consider this, waiting until after that course was completed? Uh, the course takes about an hour and a half and it's a matter of getting in somewhere. It's not a matter of, yeah, it's not a matter of money or anything else. Like, I just didn't want to complete it. It's a matter of waiting. It's like a waiting game right, as of this point, especially in Minnesota. So it's my understanding um, that this is a violation of our ordinance, that the ordinance sets out that this would not be approved, and that's why the chief did not approve it. And so what we're being asked to consider is overriding an ordinance that was put in place, I would imagine, to um, support the safety of the city and to uh, the village and to address liability of the village in providing I, these kinds of uh, decisions. Yeah, I understand. I understand completely. I am. Um, I've never, you know, I've never, all I can say for that is I've never been in trouble before. It was a bad decision. Um, I've, I've been trying to keep on task with it. Of course, it's in LaSalle County and I'm down here. So it's it's a very hard thing to keep the communication line open. You know, I don't do it not intending not to do it. I, I, it's just something that I've been working on and that I will succeed through. One correction that I'll make, uh, Mary, is that it's not an ordinance that was passed, it was a resolution. And so it's more of guidelines. So I just wanna make sure that we're talking in the, in the correct terms. Thank you. And we also have had uh, uh, other uh, petitions to, you know, to change our minds and we have done so. I mean, uh, uh, you know, as a lot of young people have had uh, I mean, you know, she said it, it was a bad decision. I mean, that, uh, that, that happens to a lot of folks and, uh, we have, uh, you know, if they're, uh, 
working there a lot it's a lot uh, better for those to people to be working than it is to be you know not working and apparently she's uh, uh has been uh, a bartender prior to this and uh you know i mean uh, i think uh you know it's worth the consideration to uh, give her a chance to uh say hey i made dumb decisions i don't ch- i don't want to do that ever again uh chief would you would say that or would you say that do you call them like a red there's more than a dwi for red flags for stuff like this or the automatic appeal i guess i would ask can you repeat your question I, i'm sorry there was a noise behind me <laughs> sorry um uh, it's not just OWI. There's other quote unquote red flags that uh, bring this up um, automatic denial up right away or go on to appeal, or is it just OWI? Uh, related to all cases, not this specific case. Yes, there are other items that can be used to make determination. Obviously, the incomplete application. Sometimes people are trying to hide information that I find in the background investigation. Um, if there were underage alcohol or if you had been convicted pr- uh, prior for uh, providing alcohol to a minor in a, you know, in a bar, those types of things. Um, you know, I think two things come to mind as I listen to the discussion. One being that, you know, this is not a, a license that we're, we're judging the person and, and what their activities are. It's a license where we're allowing someone to distribute alcohol to others in the village of North Hudson and be reasonable and responsible and making sure that they don't provide those people with too much alcohol to the point that they, you know, uh, over serve them to make good decisions on whether or not they serve them. Um, and I think, you know, the point's been made that, that there was some, um, that there were some issues on, on judgment. And I, I guess the only thing that I will point out, and again, I, I'm just reading the facts, is that in her letter in the appeal, it says that she had one alcoholic drink before operating. She was not intoxicated, but she did not deny that she was under the influence. And, and I guess that's where the decision has to come from this board is she then has to make the decision whether or not the person that she's serving is intoxicated or under the influence. And in the police report from LeSueur County Sheriff's Office, there was evidence that there was much more than one drink that had been consumed. So just some things to take into consideration on judgment. I would also say if we have a resolution to this effect, there's there's a reason that there's a resolution. And if we don't want this resolution, then we should, we should change the resolution, but that is what the resolution is. And there would need to be some pretty strong extenuating circumstances for uh, a resolution to not be followed. Otherwise, there's no purpose to it. <clears throat> well, uh, most of the resolutions, I mean, that I've been involved in are, they're more guidelines rather than, uh, or support of uh, certain, you know, uh, things that are going on around here. It doesn't have the, the force of an ordinance that, uh, that uh, we, uh, you know, where you would have to change the resolution. This is a guideline for the chief to be able to say yay or nay, uh, for to give him some point to start with. You know, I mean, uh, and he always does a great job of his due diligence. So I, uh, and like I said, we've got a history of uh, of allowing uh, other folks that have made bad decisions continue with their employment and uh, in covering. Uh, and helping out the local businesses. But if I understand this correctly, Amy? our chief has said nay. You said yay or nay. He has said nay. Is that true? So again, I can only recommend approval or denial. I don't make the decision. So my the recommendation, recommendation was denial. Isn't that correct, Chief? Based on the resolution and the information in that resolution, yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, chief, do you have any idea how many of these we have, or anyone, how many of these we have approved? In my 15 and a half years as a chief of police, all appeals have been approved, but they all have absolutely different sets of circumstances. So that that's up to you how you want to make that decision. If I could just say something, um, I am I'm only a I'm a very little person. I'm only you said that 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 it was obvious that I had more than one drink, but I'm only five foot and I didn't eat anything that day prior to dinner. So, I mean, I, 
if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't. Definitely not. I mean, I, I have learned a lot from this experience, so I can't say that I'm I'm perfect, but I I do consider myself a hard worker, and I do have a little head on my shoulders. Right, and Chief, I want to confirm that so the conviction was conviction was 2018 at the end of 2018, so basically almost 2019, and she's been without this. That's incorrect. Okay. The application well, was incorrect. It was a year later. It was actually December of 2019 where the, okay. the, the stop was, and the conviction, I believe, was early 2020. I'd have to find that, and I can. Okay, thank you. I believe it was 2019. I believe that was a typo. I Yeah. I believe he is right on that. Dan, if I may just comment on the process here. Um, you know, the resolution was passed to allow the chief and the administrator to administratively uh, allow the vast majority of these licenses. You know, the alternative was to have every single license come before the board for approval. So this was the process that was set up to sort of streamline things. And there were certain guidelines put in place with the resolution to hmm. you know, follow, follow the chief to, you know, pick these things up and then, you know, report on those. And it also allows the board to make a decision ultimately through this appeal process. Thank you, Paul. That yeah, that was because we used to have every every application would come through the board, I believe, and that was got to be tedious. And it and it's uh, and the and Melissa and the chief, if they're you know, I'm sure we've passed plenty of them. Or they've got plenty of them that have gone through without uh, having you know. The only time they come before the board is for, is through an appeal. Okay, looks like we're done with this one. I think uh, we better have a roll call vote here because we've got uh, some questions. Uh, Phil? Are we voting? I vote to approve, approve the request, yes. Yeah, okay. the motion is to approve. Yep. Uh, Mary? No. Kirk. Yes. Amy? No. Brian? Yes. Tim? Yes. <clears throat> and uh, I will say yes. Motion carries 5 to 2. Uh, and on to our next item of business resolution. 202104 Department of Natural Resources Review of Compliance Maintenance Annual Report to CMAR Approval Requested. Is there Stan, a I, move to, I move to approve res resolution number 2021 04. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Phil. Uh, and this is an annual. Uh, Report, uh, Patrick, uh, are you hanging around here someplace? Yes, I'm here. And uh, was there any issues or anything that came up that uh, we should be aware of? Not that I'm aware of, no. Or, you know, any, you know maybe a little background for the, for the new folks that uh, have uh, joined the board. So uh, it's just so they know what's a, what a CMAR actually is. Sure. It's, um well, basically, it's Nathan and I work on it because um, it has to do with um, financials um, <clears throat> and also with things that I've things that we've improved, um, certain goals and stuff. Not too many of those that will be in our um, C Mom, which is another acronym. But um, I'm not sure how the financial end of it turned out because Nathan works on that. I'll see that. I guess I. Could have seen it, but um, I haven't seen that yet. So um, basically all I enter in is um, our upgrades uh, the, to the lift stations, 
um, if we replace any pipes, anything like that. Um, and if we are um, using our CMOM, developing it, all that stuff. So it's pretty. Thank you, Patrick. Is there any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the resolution 2021-04, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, item eight, preliminary resolution 2021-05, declaring intent to special level or to levy special assessments on 6th Street North State Highway 35. Discussion possible approval. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? A second. Thanks, Tim. Uh, discussion? Kevin, do you want to explain this to the, to the sure. board? Sure. Sure, I can step in. So basically, this is the start of the special assessment process so we have to adopt the resolution so it outlines all the different tax id numbers oh. along the project corridor so it's from the lake Mallow bridge up to the summer street and the only thing that we're looking at special assessing as part of this project is just the sanitary sewer levels um, all the other items are either picked up by the village or with this project, a lot of the cost is gonna be carried from the DOT. So overall it's you know not gonna be a huge dollar amount, but there will be some um, assessments for those parcels just for the sewer laterals. Okay. Any questions? Comment? What? What's what's not a lot of money to you, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> so just from what I you know looked at some of the estimates and where the bids came in at, I think it's going to be between two to three thousand per service, so per parcel, and that can be paid over time. Yeah, there is a um, according to your assessment policy, it's all based on the dollar amount of how long they can, you know, pay those out. Whether it's two, three, four years, I'd have to look, you know, based on that figure to see what it would end up being. But Am I correct in uh, assuming that this is a standard, you know, being new, it's a standard thing, the costs are, um, I don't even know what the wording would be, but you know, they're figured out based on a formula and it's a pretty standard thing and it's within the realm of what um, the range would be for this kind of an assessment. Yeah, so the village has a special assessment policy that they have adopted mm -hmm. and we've done it on a number of the other okay. projects that you've right. done over the years. I just um, want to make sure because it, I assume that, but yeah, you know, I need to know that. Thank you. Yep. And then this will come back. Um, this basically gives Cedar Corp the okay to do the report for this and to come up with the dollar amounts. Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong. But And then if it's done by June Public Works, they'll review it. But otherwise, uh, it'll come for a public hearing. All the affected property owners will get notification of that report. It'll show them what they owe in and have that information. And then July, there'll be a public hearing um, where those affected property owners can ask questions and things like that. That'll happen at the July village board meeting. Thank you, Melissa. Yep. And Kevin. Hey, Kevin, are we gonna have that by the 15th? Yeah, that's what my goal is, yes. Okay, thanks. Yep. Anything else? Hearing none, uh, all in uh, favor of the resolution 2021 to declare it for special levy assessment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Perfect. Thank you. Okay, item number nine is uh, new business from the board or uh, from the board or staff. 
And the first is president's comments. And uh, I would just like to uh, uh, say, uh, give, first of all, a spam alert to, uh, because uh, certain <laughs> emails are, uh, I was made aware over the weekend that uh, a couple of our trustees were uh, uh, contact, supposedly contacted by me. And, uh, and, uh, to ask them to, uh, because I couldn't get to a phone or I couldn't do this or that, that I asked them to purchase $400 gift cards and then to get back. And then they were supposed to respond to the email for further instructions. Well, uh, I just like to say that somebody, uh, it's a spoof that, uh, and then for everybody to watch their emails and stuff, because uh, this was from a, you know, a created Gmail account that must have been created in my name. And uh, I have assured both of the trustees and all of the trustees that uh, you'll never see something like that coming from me. And uh, we, and I'm talking with Melissa and, uh, and the chief that's uh, there's ongoing different, uh, uh, people hitting you up. I mean, Amazon, there's fake Amazons and different things like that. So uh, please, everyone out there, uh, if it, uh, you know, I mean, Melissa had some great pointers to say, hey, if you see something like that, call the number, you know, I mean, that's on the back of your card, if it's a credit card thing, or call the person that supposedly they're coming from and verify before you do anything like that. That's, uh, that, uh, you know, cause, uh, it was like, well, what do you want me to do? And I said, I don't want you to do anything, you know? So, uh, you know, so then we, once we dug into it a little bit, we found out that somebody created, uh, they must be mad with me or something. And they created a, uh, uh, a new email and, uh, and they've got, you know, obviously our email addresses for all the trustees are on the, the website. So, uh, there's a, that they knew who to target or whatever it was. And I said, you know, it was, it was like, uh, one of them was like, wait a minute, you know, that's brand new board member. I don't, I haven't even got a chance to really meet them face to face yet. So I would never go in to ask for anything like that. So please be aware everyone out there and, and stay vigilant because it's not getting any better out there. We just had another, uh, a ransomware attack on the meat companies today that, uh, you know, there it's just it's a constant evil that's uh, permeating the, the world, and uh, and we just got to be vigilant. And the only other thing I got is a uh, couple weeks. It will be uh, I'd like to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, and I hope you have a safe and blessed Father's Day. And of course, first day of summer is coming. Okay, Melissa. Uh, nothing from me tonight. Okay. Uh, item 10, Plan Commission. Paul, are you going to do the chair update? I certainly will. Um, the Plan Commission met uh, in person for the first time in a long time. Um, the meeting was relatively short. There was a uh, three-lot CSM that was proposed. The Plan Commission recommended approval. Uh, the only comments were concerning a 50-foot access drive for a flag lot and whether that should be wide enough for a public road. The applicant, it was the applicant's desire there not be a public road to, uh, for the development to remain low density. Uh, and the, the plan commission approved that or recommended approval. The other two items were the amendments to the zoning dealing with the riverway that uh, the board looked at previously. So we had to go back to plan commission for a public hearing. Uh, the, both public hearings were held. Uh, no one showed up or spoke at either one, and the plan commission recommended approval of those. Okay, so now that would mean we'd need uh, uh, a motion to for the application from Paul Goodwin on the three minor subdivision lots. Is there a motion to approve? <laughs> Stan, I move to uh, recommend approval of the three lot minor subdivision at 642 Galhad Road North with the following conditions. Number one, parkland dedication fee shall be paid prior to village signing of the final CSM. 
According to the current fee schedule, the required amount is $2,000. Item number two, individual lot grading and drainage plan shall be provided at the time of building permit application to confirm that adjacent property owners are not impacted by stormwater runoff. Item three, individual lot erosion control plan shall be provided at time of building permit application to prevent sediment transfer into adjacent property and village streets during building construction. Item number four, lots will be required to hook up to municipal sanitary sewer and water main at time of building construction. And item number five, provide a copy of the final CSM to the village after it has been recorded. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? I second that. Thank you, Amy. Uh, further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor of the approval of the subdivision signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, let's see. Number C then is uh, adoption of ordinance 02 2021, amending chapter 98, zoning article 5, administration uh, and enforcement, section 98 17, enforcement and penalties, void permits, approval requested. Move to approve. Thank you, Brian. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, uh, comments um, or questions? If that actually would be, or it, if it follows the normal ordinance numbers, is twenty twenty one dash o two, right, Melissa? O two twenty twenty one. Well, she's got it. Oh, all right. It, it, the numbers transpose, Melissa. I don't think that's true. I believe that there's a different numbering system. Sir? That's accurate. Okay. Really? Okay. Huh. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion or questions? Hearing none. All in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 0221, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And Item D, Adoption Ordinance 03-2021, amending Chapter 98, Zoning, Article 6, Special Provisions, Section 98-151, Lower St. Croix Riverway Zoning, Approval Requested. So moved. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Phil. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of ordinance 03-2021, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And on to personnel and finance committee recommendations. Claims approval requested. Uh, Stan, can I move to approve the June 1st, 2021 non-recurring claims of $34,768.15? Thank you, Kirk. Is there a second? A uh, second. Thank you. Uh, is there any uh, comments or questions? I will. I'm sure we will have some because I see Brian Riley has joined us from Ailers, and uh, I'm going to let him take uh, over and explain uh, the process and uh, the and uh, each one of the different. Uh, uh, resolutions that we will be. Dan, we have to vote on the claims about. first. Dan, all the all for crying out loud! I thought I'd get through one today. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got claims. We've got to do. Uh, Tim, yes. Brian, yes. Amy, yes. Kirk, yes. Mary, yes. And Phil, yes. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go on to the next uh, section. Uh, Brian, uh, your show. Well, thank you. Um, I wanted to uh, take some time just to walk everybody through what um, you should have in front of you as our pre-sale report will be easier to kind of uh, take you step by step through 
what we discussed last time and how it has uh, transitioned mildly uh, to its final form. And then there are a number of resolutions that I'll uh, kind of describe to you in some measure of detail before you uh, consider them. So uh, if you recall last time, we had discussed a number of things. Um, first and foremost being financing of uh, the village's portion of the State Trunk Highway 35 project. Uh, subsequent to that, well, actually at that meeting was discussed also some forward looking aspects related to potential borrowing uh, over the next uh, at least one year, if not two. And um, identified was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, most of it is a Wisconsin Ave uh, project, if that sounds correct, uh, and the village's costs associated with that. And then also you have a number of debt issues outstanding that we'll look through for potential refinancing. So uh, what's on your agenda is for consideration. Some things could be uh, shifted if you'd like. So it's always easier to start by throwing everything on the table and having the discussion uh, and then working our way through the resolutions in a fashion uh, kind of one by one. And then they all roll up to a single issue. So uh, previously we had uh, looked at some things and if I can bring you to, you know, the, the narrative content is really just for you to peruse uh, and kind of give you some high level detail on the proposed issue of bonds. What I will bring you to is the first page of numbers. So after page six uh, of the document, it's actually then page eight of the PDF. And what we've done is we've built a bond issue that incorporates the sewer, water, streets and storm water, as well as the costs of next year's capital projects into a single bond issue. And then also looked at refinancing of existing debt. And there's a reason why we do it in this fashion because we have to help the attorneys draft the proper resolutions and they look to specific sections of law when they do that. And when you issue bonds, you need to look to chapter 67 and there is an enumerated list of things you can issue bonds for uh, without prior referendum approval. And so we need to point to things like, how much are you spending on sanitary sewer? How much are you spending on water? The storm water happens to be really a function of the general fund and not an enterprise fund. So a utility like sewer and water, and it is within the right of way. So it's easier just to call that streets. So streets and storm water are combined into a purpose. That also allows us then to break out the various repayment sources and then allocate out pieces of the total amount of debt. So then we can look to those repayment sources to transfer in money. And then we also look to how much you would need to levy in taxes on an annual basis to support the debt. So as you're looking at this page, you're seeing a few things. You're seeing an issue sized at $2,055,000. Of that, when you look below, uh, 505,000 is strictly for refinancing purposes, all right? And of the 2,055, we have 520,000 for sanitary sewer, 765,000 for water, and then streets and storm water, and then some other smaller pieces uh, like some landscaping and property acquisition within the right of way are allocated to the tax levy as new money and that's $265,000. And those to some degree are gonna relate back to the resolutions that you have on your agenda. If I bring you up to the top portion of that page, you can see we have a 20 year repayment schedule and the aggregate debt service is on that left section of the line. The right, right of the line is then broken down by where does that money come from? So. Again, on that left side, you can see the principal structure as well as the total principal and interest due on an annual basis. And you can see it varies to some degree. And then as you continue from left to right, you can see how much of that annually is coming from the sewer utility, the water utility, the tax levy, and then how much of it is strictly related to refinancing. And the issues that we're looking at refinancing as of right now are paid from the levy. And so you can see there where once the, the refunding portions are done, the debt service drops and we have more of a level structure. All right. Uh, so we have built in some, some budgets for cost of issuance in order to arrive at a total issue size. And our goal is always to be conservative with our estimates. 
uh, so that we can size the issue appropriately and establish what are essentially not to exceed amounts when you consider these resolutions. We can, we can make adjustments and we can always go down. If at any time we need to go up, we have to restart the process, which simply means we need to come back to the board potentially and uh, reconsider one or more of the resolutions. But you've got final costs other than next year's project as an estimate, uh, which is perfectly fine. You can borrow in advance of a project and you can use reasonable estimates in that regard. And so that money will be there and available for that project next year. We have also estimated the interest rates for the issue and we have used uh, so our analysis of some similar transactions that have gone to market recently. And then we've, we've added a little uh, cushion to current rates and that's about 0.2% over the current market. And so each of the uh, principal amounts is its own maturity and will carry its own rate to some degree. When you blend that all together and weight it by uh, the principal structure, if you look in the middle part of this table, you'll see our estimated kind of blended interest cost. And most specifically, we look at the true interest cost. And we're estimating as of right now that that's about 1.83% over that entire structure. And then if you include all your costs, you know, if you consider it like an APR on a consumer loan where all of the fees and expenses are included, we have yet about 2.1%. So if we were to go to market basically today or this week, rates are stable since we last built this, we should expect to do a little better than what we're projecting right now. All right. So I'll pause quickly and see if there are any questions on this page, because this gives you the real high level overview of the total debt structure and then how we're looking to the various repayment sources to support the debt over its entire life. So we are including the Wisconsin street project in this or not? This, ha this has it in there. It's really up to you if you wanna include it. It can always be backed out, but for the purposes of crafting your agenda, the notion was we would build it in and then you can talk through it. We can always back those numbers out and adopt the resolutions in a, in a different, slightly different number or a reduced number. Um, I think actually, uh, Brian, isn't the only portion of Wisconsin Street North, it's just the streets. You're, you're correct, just the streets and the yes. acquisition. And I think there's a little bit of stormwater curb and gutter in there too. The utility portions are not included because we had discussed potentially using your uh, ARPA money and eligible expenditures for those funds are sewer and water projects. And so allocating those dollars to that portion or those portions uh, seemed reasonable and just borrowing for the piece that would be repaid from the levy. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll move on then. And what I wanna walk through next are the various refinancings and we've included them. They're not tremendous savers. And it, it has a lot to do with the fact that there's not a lot of time through the final maturity. Uh, but they do save some money and we are aiming a little high on rates. And so we always have the opportunity to monitor and pull these out. If the market moves away from us, you still need your new money because you got to pay for your projects. You don't have to refinance. So if the market moves away from us, we can back all of this out, all right? And if it ends up costing you more than it does now, that obviously makes no fiscal sense. And so we can make those determinations as we proceed in time. So they save a modest amount of money. If we were to use today's rates, they would certainly save more and they'd be, they'd be better candidates. The other aspect of this is we're, we're adding a debt issue and you already have an existing debt portfolio with a number of issues. So we'll, we'll, we'll be consolidating some of the debt, which relieves some of the administer, administrative burdens uh, on an annual basis. You're making, and probably semi-annually, you're making payments on these loans. And so now consolidating them, you have a single debt issue to look at. So instead of having those three issues outstanding and then adding another one you know, on net, we're, we're actually reducing how many issues you have outstanding at this particular time. So as you're going through here, we're looking at three promissory notes that you already have uh, existing. And the first one would be a, a note from 2015. 
Uh, you can see the savings analysis on an annual basis on that far right side, and it's aggregated to a total. And so from there, then, um, you know, we want to make sure all those numbers are positive. And certainly on an annual basis, not all of them are. In the aggregate, they are. Again, if we use today's rates, these would all be positive savings annually, and it would be a, a value add from a refinancing perspective. We're also looking at uh, your 27, one of your 2017 notes. Um, there are two of them that you have outstanding. Uh, this one requires a little more from a refinancing perspective. You can see our savings estimates on the right side. This one is a little better uh, in that you've got about $2,400 in cash flow savings. And I should say, you know, we always look at these on a present value basis, right? So you've got a stream of savings over time, but how much is that worth today in today's dollars? And so we discount that. And uh, that net present value benefit gives us some uniformity of measurement. And so, um, you know, that's about 3,500 bucks or a little over 2% of what you're refinancing. Ideally, we want these numbers to be somewhere around 5%. And we would approach that if we were using uh, current market rates versus the 0.2% over current market. And then finally, you have another, uh, a little bit larger uh, note outstanding from 2017. Uh, this one is a little stronger because it is larger. And so when you start to absorb some of the costs, the economics can move away from you click quickly when the debt is relatively short and in and, and small dollar size. And so this one clearly is a little better. Uh, saves about $4,400 uh, over its remaining life or almost $6,000 on a present value basis. All right, so I'll try to highlight some of those key metrics that we would typically look at. So again, they're not super strong savings. Uh, the savings would be there if we executed today, plus you would consolidate debt. And so then uh, maybe I'll just pause again and see if there are any questions with respect to the refinancing. Yeah, Melissa, <clears throat> the uh, 2015 note, what was that for? Actually, I wanna know all three of them. <laughs> um. Brian, do you know what the 2015 is offhand? I know 2017, there was a, I think one was a public works garage. The other one was uh, the Mack truck and a catch basin project. The 2015, oh, okay. I'm not, I don't have that offhand. Yeah, I think Brian, did you new. have that? I'm looking at the documents. View? There's there's usually a reference, but I'm, it's not jumping out at me immediately. Was that Lakeview Drive, Melissa? Oh. Could have Could been. Have been. That was it could have been. 15. Yeah, that was yeah, right when been. I started. Okay. Yeah. And the important thing with this, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, is with these refinancing these three loans, it doesn't extend the loan 20 years. They're still going to be paid off the normal days that they would, the normal year they would have. Correct. So, because so that was not, my concern. I didn't want to extend yep. it for a Mack truck that we're not going to have in 20 years. So, <laughs> right. Brian could probably. <laughs> yep. We are uh, amortizing them over their original lives. And so I, I am looking at that document. And so the original face amount was $245,000 for the 2015 note. And the reference to the projects is Lakeview Drive, Pine Street, East Bank Court, and Lemon Street projects. Okay. Um, if you can bear with me, I, I do have all the documents. I just got to open them. So the finish date remains the same as, okay. And so what is the finish? There, you know, they may be just a little bit different from the dating scheme perspective. So maybe the payment dates aren't exactly the same, but it will mature a final maturity in the same year as you originally had them set forth. Okay. Yeah. I'm not seeing the original on uh, this 2017 issue. Yeah. But I think we know what those two are, Brian. Okay. So. Great. I can tell you the original face amount, but, um, Beyond that, I, I don't have all the details right hand. Well, and, and you said uh, they're modest savings, but uh, I know one thing that this board has, uh, we've worked hard on is we'll take every modest saving and any big savings <laughs> that we can take. We're, uh, that's, uh, I, I appreciate your uh, uh, information on this, and uh, I, uh, I would like to be able to go Say, hey, take that low money right now because, uh, you know, the economy isn't going to, you know, all of a sudden go lower. Well, to, to that point, uh, even if rates stay the same, as we move forward in time, 
the economics of savings will deteriorate rapidly and, it, and, and there just won't be another opportunity. So you're not likely to do this again when we, when we can establish both new money, a substantial amount of new money with refinancing. It's far more efficient because we're able to spread those costs across the wide base. Um, so you save more uh, per se. And again, every day we move forward in time, even as rates stay the same, you have less time to amortize those costs. So the economics will move away from you very quickly. So we will continue to monitor the market as we move closer to selling the bonds. Rates go up and they're not saving money. We will immediately tell the village, I'm aware, and we can back them out. All right. So nothing, nothing is set in stone once you adopt these resolutions. They merely uh, are the initial authorizations to essentially proceed and send the public notice of your intent to issue bonds for these stated purposes. So from there, we had talked about your, your general obligation borrowing capacity previously, and it's not probably news to you that you're in a fantastic position. Uh, the next page has a table that sets forth all of the principal amount, principal requirements on an annual basis for the debt that you have outstanding. Obviously, we will refinance as proposed here those three prior issues, and so we don't want to double count them, so we back them out. And so with the new bonds, uh, you would still have about 90% plus of your available geo borrowing capacity. So you're, you're really in tremendous shape from that perspective. And for a community of your size, um, you know, you don't see many places that have retained that much borrowing capacity. So uh, certainly, uh, you know, the board uh, over its history has been good stewards of your, uh, of your, uh, of your financial well-being, and certainly you're, you look great from this perspective. So really probably nothing to dig into deeper or otherwise point out with respect to this particular table. All right, so uh, I think importantly, we wanna understand the levy impact. And so what we've done here is we've taken all of your debt outstanding, and then we've shown both the principal and interest requirements. So how much do you need annually to make the payments? Now we also understand that you're using revenues or transfers from some other funds beyond just the levy to make these debt service payments. And we've built this in. So we've netted out the transfers that are coming in to make your general obligation debt payments. So those are coming from water and sewer utility. All right, and we've done the same for the allocable portions of sewer and water for these bonds. And so when we net out the debt transfers then we arrive at what you're levying for debt service. And I think it's fairly obvious that you have a big drop down from 21 to 22. And that has everything to do with the fact that this is the last year of payments on your 2012 bonds. All right. And there was a substantial amount of levy associated with that debt. And a lot of it, I think, had to do with the village hall, actually, if I'm thinking about this correctly. Uh, there was some borrowing done at that time uh, for improvements to that building. Uh, I think you had a capital campaign that went on too, but there were a number of projects, some 2004 refinancing and a lot of that was tax levy tied into that. Um, and so that debt will be extinguished. And so you drop down substantially. And so this is the part where I do want you to look at this structure, right? So you go from a little under 200,000 and you drop down to around 120,000 uh, for a few years. And then you have another leg down after that, uh, after some of that prior debt is exhausted that we're refinancing, all right? And so if you want what I would call some measure of um, tax rate relief, you can achieve that with this structure. If you wanna kind of level things out and have the same roughly dollar levy and or tax rate, you know, on the right side there going from 40 cents per thousand to 24 cents per thousand, you do have the latitude to push some principle up into the structure so that you don't have as big of a drop. Or you could say, I like the way this looks, let's maintain this and proceed. So I am looking for a little bit of feedback on your desire as a taxing entity on, on how you want your levy for debt service to look. All right, because uh, certainly what you don't want is you know, your tax rate going up and down, up and down, uh, you know, to some large degree, you want to provide some measure of certainty. So there's nothing wrong 
with having some step downs like this. And it does afford you some latitude as you move into the future to take on some additional debt service without causing a corresponding spike in the levy and the mill rate. Or we could flatten it out a bit on the front end. If you wanted to try to maintain the same trajectory, we could push up a little bit of um, the tax levy portion of the debt. And so it's a little flatter on the front end and still provide some step downs in the future. So I would look for a little bit of, of, of your, take your temperature on that and give me some feedback because we still have the opportunity and it does not impact the size of the debt. It only impacts the structure. So your resolutions are unaffected, but we do have the, the latitude to have some flexibility here and play with the structure a little bit. I like the resolutions as they stand, but uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about it in finance. So, you know, we don't have this document that you're looking at. I don't know if it was anticipated can, that you you were going to share it. I sent it out. I sent I it out my, to everybody by email. Okay. I can share my screen too, if that's helpful. Yeah. I sent it out last week. Uh, um. Brian, the one concern I have is I know we discussed without getting too much into it that we may not have um, funds from the water sewer fund um, as much as we had to repay this. And I know we had talked about we could put that on the tax levy as well. General obligation debt we can put on yeah. the tax levy if we don't have it from the funds, correct? Then, per, then if that is the case and you have some concern, maybe that does warrant the way it stands right now because yeah. you get back to about the same place if you absolutely needed to. So if the revenue in those utilities diminishes to some great degree, you still have to make the debt payments. And because right. of general obligation debt, you have the authority to levy an unlimited amount by both rate and dollar amount. And so even though you intend to use water and sewer revenues to transfer here and abate a portion of that required levy, you will always have uh, the authority to levy 100% of the debt service. So um, that may argue then, Melissa, that we kind of ignore what I said and I, I roll the tape back here and, uh, and you leave it as is because if you do have to levy for those dollars, certainly um, you're gonna kind of fill those gaps potentially. Yeah, Brian, and we, we discussed that after you presented last week, I think we kind of brought that up. So Melissa brought that this brought it back to the table today. That it's a good point. So the way you have it in the chart right now, if I'm understanding it, are the payments gonna be quite a bit, Is are you explaining it that the pay, repayments will be quite a bit higher the first few years and then it drops off? Or are you asking if we want it to be the same payment over the 20 years? Which so I think that, is what our current yeah. bond kind of was. Mm -hmm. It was basically the same payment over the years. Correct. And then, um, you know, you haven't added as much debt recently, right, since right. 2012. So when that payment is made, you're going to step down to a new norm of around 120000 And then some additional debt will be exhausted in the future. And then you'll step down again but that assumes you take on no additional debt that you levy for, which is unlikely. So it's nice to have a little room in there so that as you do take things on, you need to buy equipment, you need to do a small street project, then you can levy the dollars, um, you know, so they don't spike up again in the future. You can fill in some of these gaps over time without causing uh, the levy to jump up. Okay. To your point about the, the revenues available from the utilities in the absence of the available revenues, uh, you still have to pay the debt. And so again, it might be nice to have that those gaps in there so that um, you're not jumping up, you know, all of a sudden. Like how you have it the way presented it now, here? Yeah. So the way it is now would accommodate both of the scenarios where, of course, you're going to need to borrow again to some degree in the future. And if you needed to levy for the utility portions, uh, you can fill in for some of those step downs without the taxpayers necessarily feeding, feeling that immediate impact. Right. Because I think that's what the board has always tried to avoid, that we don't want sharp drops down and then all of a sudden it spikes up. So if we can right. keep it kind of as steady as we can with right. that and still okay. allow for future debt if we need it. Well, understanding that, I think I can massage it a very small amount. So that 22 is, I think you have some certainty of utility revenues probably going into the next fiscal year. Does that sound accurate or no? 
Um, I'm sorry, repeat that. So the certainty around the utility revenues, um, you know, I don't know how much you have, you know, of confidence for say the next fiscal year. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really hard to say at this okay. point. That's fair enough. Then I think we should leave it as is based upon what you're <laughs> yeah. describing. I think we should leave it wholly alone and, and not be concerned about uh, filling in some of those gaps because then you have the, then you have the leeway to take on some additional tax levy without having a correspondent in, increase in the tax rate. So this would okay. mean like it, it mitigates the risk associated with that, the way it's set up right now. Okay. All right. Hey. Um, that's that's what I have for prepared information, just for your uh, kind of high level overview. And then if you tie back to resolutions, um, it's required that you, when you want to issue bonds, again, that you look to the enumerated purposes under law, and then you build the resolutions around that. And then there, there's also a resolution on your agenda for um, what you can see there being uh, the issuance and sale of general obligation corporate purpose bonds, and it has no dollar amount attached to it. What that does is it combines all of those other resolutions into a single bond issue, which is what we've just looked at being the $2,055,000. So you have all of your underlying enumerated purposes and they all roll up to a single issue with that final resolution. I think you've done an outstanding job and I kind of like where we're going. Like I said, I just soon get the, the cheap, the money cheap and, uh, and go when we can. So, uh, you know, anybody else got uh, comments or questions or we start voting on these or, uh, I just want to say thank you. I think you did a really good job with those charts and explaining it. Uh, it isn't the easiest thing, and I appreciate that very much. Well, that's if nice of you. Someone I, you. I try to not throw too much back at you for decision making in the midst of a board meeting, but there was only one thing that we needed to get clarity on, and, and we got through it. So thank you. Anybody else? Well, hearing none, I guess uh, we would start with resolution 202106, the initial resolution of the village of North Hudson, Wisconsin, relating to the issuance of general obligation bonds. But is there a motion? Stan, I move to approve resolution number 2021-06. Initial resolution of the village of North Hudson, Wisconsin, relating to the issuance of general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed 520000 for sanitary sewer system improvements. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any kind of more comments or questions on this? These need a roll call. Yeah. Oh, I've, no, I've, bond issues. Okay, uh, well, let's start with Phil. Uh, yes. And Mary? Yes. Kirk? Yes. Amy? Yes. Brian? Yes. Tim? Yes. And it's a unanimous decision. I will say yes. Okay, next one, 2021-07. Stan, I move to approve resolution number 2021-07, initial resolution of the Village of North Hudson, Wisconsin, relating to the issuance of general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed $765,000 for water system improvements. Second. Thank you, Brian. In a second. Thank you. Uh, and let's go the other way this time. I'm going to say yes, Jim. Yes. Brian? Yes. Uh, Amy? Yes. Kirk? Yes. Mary? Yes. And Phil? Yes. Thank you. And uh, then we go to, uh, let's see, 2021-08. 
Stan, I move to approve resolution number 2021-08, initial resolution of the village of North Hudson, Wisconsin, relating to the issuance of general obligation bonds in an amount not to exceed 265000 for the village's street improvement plan program. Thank, thank you, I Brian. Thank you, Amy. And uh, I think we've had all the discussion. So, uh, Phil. Yes. And Mary? Yes. And Kirk? Yes. And Amy? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Tim? Yes. And yes. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to 202109. Stan, I move to approve resolution number 2021-09. Initial resolution providing for the issuance and sale of general obligation refunding bonds in the approximate amount of 505000 of the village of North Hudson, Wisconsin. Thank you, Brian. Second. Second. Thank you, Phil. Uh, and we've done the discussion part. So uh, let's see who turns this in. Phil again? Uh, yes. Mary? Yes. Kirk? Yes. Amy? Yes. Brian? Yes. Tim? Yes. And yes. And okay, I think the last one is 2021 10. Stan, I move to approve resolution number 2021 10. Resolution providing for the issuance and sale of general obligation corporate purpose bonds, series 2021A of the village of North Hudson, Wisconsin. Thank you, Brian. A second. Second. Thanks, Phil. Uh, uh, is that just background noise I just heard? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll say yes, Tim. Yes. And Brian? Yes. Amy? Yes. Kirk? Yes. Mary? Yes. And Phil? Yes. Thank you very much. And just uh, just as a clarifier, uh, we just uh, we run, we talked with uh, both Paul and Brian and Melissa earlier today, and uh, because the people that want to give us or uh, lend us the money, uh, they want to know that we, the board, passed every one of these resolutions in the amount. Is that correct, Ryan Riley? Um, generally, yes. So there's a, uh, a person that's not part of this discussion that uh, is intimately involved, and that's the village's bond council or bond approving attorney, um, Bob Toffey at Freiburger Buchanan. And, and uh, he's the one that drafts all this up, keeps us all in. <laughs> with law and so yes he absolutely is interested in uh in uh, the outcome of this discussion and then going forward you have to get past this point to even sell the bonds so this is the first and really only hurdle uh, as that as, as things unfold and then basically your meeting in july will come back with a binding proposal that we can act on that will essentially lock everything in and then we'll just proceed to closing so we'll be done uh essentially in about six to seven weeks Excellent. Excellent. Uh, let's see. I think that takes us through that one. So, Brian Riley, thank you so much for your information. I know that uh, I've been through this a few times that uh, I know uh, Mary and Amy being new. It's like, holy cow. You know, so, uh, there's, you know, it's uh, village uh, uh, finances and and stuff is uh, not the easiest thing to understand. I know uh, one of our former board members uh, with 20 years and was still always hammering it and, and discussing what was going to go on and stuff. So I appreciate everybody's patience and, uh, and diligence in uh, reviewing this. And Brian, I hope you have a wonderful night. Go sell that low bid for us so that we can uh, get this done in six to seven weeks. We'll be shaking the money tree. Um, and I will say the person who gets the brunt of the blow is Melissa. So I'll thank her <laughs> and I'll do so again uh, in July, but there'll be a lot of documents and she's going to get the pen out. So um, thank you for her time as well. Absolutely. No, she knows that. Uh, 
you know, I was remiss last month. It was clerk's month and I didn't uh, say what a great job she did. You know, usually there's the league will give us something about that, but she's done an excellent job on this. And uh, we thank you all for uh, everything that you're doing. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks. Brian. Item 12. Thank you. Public works. Brian, Stan, we, 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 yeah, we did meet and we have nothing to bring forward um, from my cable board uh, committee seat. I would just mention that we received a new device and we should be able to get that. We're hoping to get it up and running for our next public works meeting, which would allow us to be able to uh, be back in the hall and on Zoom at the same time, depending on your preference. So we should have that ready for the next public works meeting and then for sure for our July meeting. Excellent. Okay. And uh, then bring us to item 13, uh, public safety. Tim, what do you got for us? Uh, Stan, yes, we did meet and we do have a motion to carry. Um, I will welcome that opportunity. Who wants to read it? Amy, can you read it? Hold on if I can find it. I got It'll it. Out there. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, move to approve Pepper Festival's parade detail option number four for no parking and the closure of Michelson Street North from Lemon Street North to 6th Street North and 6th Street North from Michelson Street North to Monroe Street North and Monroe Street North from 6th Street North to 4th Street North for the parade route and breakdown area on Saturday, August 21, 2021 from 10.30 a.m. to the end of the parade. No parking signs to be posted showing no parking on Saturday between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. on those streets routinely open for normal parking during the Pepper Festival. Is that it? Okay. Uh, that should, do we do the other one too, uh, Chief, when yep. you move? Probably oh, best okay. to do one at a time. Do one yeah, at a time, to, okay. Yeah, go ahead, yep. So, so we need second. So we need a second, yeah. I second that. Okay, so um, this was carried over from our last meeting, of course, because we had more discussions. And Melissa from Pepper Fest, I'm sorry, Michelle, Michelle from Pepperfest is on the call. She's been working with the chief closely throughout this. And she can kind of, uh, the chief is bringing up a map. But she can kind of explain the process of what Pepperfest will do for this change and kind of the overall and chief can comment also. So I'll let those two take it over. Mark, do you want to start or do you want me? I can start, that's fine. Okay. So um, this uh, the the Pepper Festival parade uh, when Pepper Fest approached the villa or approached me and then also the Public Safety Committee, it's been through a couple of renditions and so that's why when you look at your uh, motion it says option four, option three had previously been uh, moved through the committee and after some reconsideration and and some information from the um, the construction meetings that I've been attending it was determined that there may be some flow issues from the construction and potential lack of access to the west side of the village, um, which might make the closure of 7th Street during Pepperfest and then subsequently some other streets uh, directly around the Pepperfest grounds difficult for um, the flow of just normal traffic on that Saturday. And so when we determined that that may be an issue, we went back to kind of the original uh, route, which you see on the map in the green is, is really, with the exception of the fact that it really starts a little bit further to the east, typically at Lemon and Michelson, this then moves it just a block to the west and allows for north-south traffic on Lemon Street to be utilized um, if there is a need to go around from the, you know, from the uh, east side to the west side. In the meeting that I was at this morning, um, because of the holiday, that annual or that weekly meeting was moved to Tuesday. I was um, assured by the construction company um, that 6th Street North between Michelson Street and Monroe Street will be open and be completely finished curb and gutter sidewalk uh, and the, the concrete pouring. And so that will allow for the use of that particular street for the parade. And then actually they're gonna be moving to the north to that segment, um, which will help be helpful because really there'll be no through traffic from the north south on, on State Highway 35. And so we did put back in this option uh, and the public safety committee met at a special meeting last week, unfortunately, that I was unable to attend um, and uh, push forward this particular motion that has been made um, to put it back to the 
relatively to the original route, typically it would it would go one block further south to St. Croix Street North, bend back up Fifth Street North to Monroe uh, to kind of create a little bit better flow. But um, I'll let Mul or Michelle talk about some of the changes that Pepperfest has tried to implement to uh, make the parade more feasible and to have a less impact on those that are, are dealing with the construction and road closures and those types of things. Uh, but this particular lineup, I think will be a good flow. The only thing that I yet have not received back is a notice from the state on whether or not a permit will be required or a um, in order to detour Highway 35. My uh, email to the state representative was, it's already being detoured because of the construction. So I don't anticipate we're gonna to have to get any additional permitting uh, put in place in order to utilize or to, to utilize the Highway 35 between Michelson and Monroe and to shut down those streets. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you're aware we have reached out and, and if I get that information, it's, it clicks with anything that we've talked about today, I'll bring it back to the board and have that discussion. Michelle? Um, the basically the only thing that I that would be different than normal, I guess, um, would be our lineup area is a lot smaller than normal. So we'll be just decreasing the parade size to about 50%. Um, so it'll be a lot smaller parade. So um, less people coming in to get into lineup. Um, that's probably the only difference. Um, we'll have a lot more volunteers just to direct people. Um, we'll be putting out in our social media, on our website, just directing people how to get to the parade lineup, how, where to go to uh, watch the parade, um, things like that. Um, but otherwise. Is the Mickelson, diff, uh, what street does uh, A Street, one, one of the streets different as far as set up at all, Michelle? The lineup typically is on Lemon, 10th, and partially of Lund Street. Um, so this, the lineup would move to 8th Street. A Street, thank you. And historically, we have sent out notices to those um, residents that lived along the street where the lineup is. So we will notify those people on 8th Street North of the no parking in advance of the actual parade day um, and make sure that they're aware of it. And I, and I think that in the past, it's been well received. Yeah, so we'll do the same thing. We'll send out those letters. Pepperfest will do that in advance when we get those letters. No, I thought the map was excellent. I mean, uh, you guys did a great job on that. And uh, I'm glad to, you know, I mean, uh, to be able to use that uh, brand brand new pavement out there on uh, on 6th Street is going to be pretty awesome. I mean, uh, the uh, it's uh, we shouldn't have any of the band members tripping or anything like that. <laughs> it's been a possibility of the past. And I don't think we've got any horses coming in for, you know, for, you know, for riders for cleanup so that should work pretty good and that map is all michelle just so i had nothing to do with it well that's what she did an outstanding job thanks okay so let's see we're gonna do a bit. so we got a uh we got uh, a motion that we haven't voted on i believe we have not and uh, there we go. We're all back to normal. And that's, uh, let's see, there's no spend there. We were, uh, we don't have to go through that. All in favor of the uh, motion to uh, re for Prevent Press request on street closures and no parking, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No, I thank you. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that are excited that. Uh, the Pepper Festival Parade will go on, and uh, Pepper Festival is going on, so that's uh, that's huge. Uh, mm -hmm. I know. I mean, I, we're short enough to parade, so I don't know if I'm gonna let the mayor ride with me or not, but I think I will because he's pretty excited. He loves coming up here for for our parade and everything, and uh, and I'm looking forward to a great Pepper Festival again. Okay. And Stan, one of the one of the comments, Stan, uh, on the Strive to Survive update. So we did create a Facebook for Strive to Survive this week. We'll start promoting it. We are starting to promote individual businesses throughout the week just to get them out there. So um, I've collected two for the first week. Those uh, those uh, promotions went out to the Neighborhood Watch uh, uh, distribution list. 
And then we'll start creating this. We, we created the Facebook. We'll start promoting in the other ones as we go forward. So we're taking two or three businesses each week and just letting people know that they're out there. A uh, little history about each business, kind of explaining um, <clears throat> how to get there. If the construction is definitely affecting them and also just talking about, uh, you know, support your local business if you can throughout this construction. So that is oh. starting to move forward. I thank you very much for all your work on that, Tim. I mean, the signs have been great. And I've been getting the emails for uh, discussing the businesses and I, you guys have done a great job. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, and I you know, encourage everyone to support our local businesses. Uh, they are surviving, but uh, it's uh, always a struggle. They're down a little bit, but, uh, you know, everything is going ahead and uh, hopefully the construction will go as planned. Uh, Stan, Stan, there's a second motion there too. Yes. Yep. Sorry. You want me to read that? Yes, please yeah. do. I apologize, but that's right. I can I can interrupt that between those two. So it's always a good break. <laughs> Not a word. <laughs> All right. Move to approve Pepper Festival's parade detail option number four for no parking zones for parade lineup on Saturday, August twenty first, twenty twenty one, from eight a.m. to two p.m. in the five hundred and six hundred blocks of Eighth Street North, six hundred and seven hundred blocks of Michelson Street North and the 400 block of Monroe Street North with no parking signs to be posted no later than Thursday, August 19, 2021 at 9 p.m. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? Second that. Thank you, Amy. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That's that's all, Stan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Uh, Public Welfare Committee, Kirk. We do not. Nothing. Oh, we do not meet. Sorry. Okay. And how about Park Board? Uh, we did meet. I'm going to try to run through this quick. We've been here for a while, but we do have our one in five year plan. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'll do the one in five year. Please feel free to ask. Uh, the one year plan features expense um, expansion of Worcester Festival. That's what we did behind the village hall. It was a great um, icebreaker for the new hockey arena. Uh, Buckthorn is we're trying to figure out how we can get uh, goats to clean up a lot of our parks. A lot of our parks are run by through that. Uh, moving the park equipment, we do that. We're moving that behind the village hall. That's how we can try to show movies for kids to come and see. Uh, Glen Oak basketball repair. Uh, the course, it, the court itself is a little bumpy. Uh, we're trying to find a place to put a, this is the one year plan. We're trying to find a place to put the pickleball court. Uh, it's one of the fastest, most, this is my number one thing my mom keeps bringing up, but we're trying to find a new place or where we could put a pickleball court for people to play that fastest growing sport. Uh, we have a unity tree. We're trying to find some place we could put a tree that everyone could light up together when we could do a little festival and then park cleanup. Our goal has always been to just clean up our parks. Uh, you know, if people have, we're really not looking to spend a ton of money, but we love trying to move things forward. So that's park cleanup. Uh, that's our one year plan. Our, uh, any questions on that? I like question. It. Yep, go ahead. So for the pickleball court, because I've had people asking me about that too, Kirk, uh, and I've been told there is an existing tennis court that we can use. Is that accurate? That well, would have to be modified, or is it an entire new space that uh, is being considered? Uh, pickleball carts are a little bit smaller. Uh, we don't really have any tennis courts. The uh, North Hudson Elementary has a tennis court. Right, I'm aware of that. We have a couple basketball courts that we're trying to see if we could expand that. Okay. But no, we don't technically have any tennis courts. And, so and as of this time, you're looking at options and it is not yet determined if you're going to retrofit and change an existing surface or if it's going to have to be brand new. Oh, um, it would be change or add on. Okay. So we we were talking about maybe 
running into one of the basketball courts and then seeing if the back side of it we could add on. But right. yeah, that's all the stuff. People are just asking. They are very excited about this. And so I just want to be able to give accurate information. Yep. Thank that's it's absolutely like what your question is absolutely right. That's what we're trying to see if we could do A or B or we don't want to lose any basketball courts, but we're trying to add on. Great. Thanks. All right. I know Patrick's got some great equipment that, uh, that he can level out certain areas if we can determine which ones they want before we put pavement down on them. So uh, we've got the equipment. I know uh, there was a earlier or a proposal that was it talked about for paving some areas, and uh, Patrick said, "Oh no, we can do all that uh, pre-excavating and stuff with our equipment now that we've got." So appreciate you throwing that in there, Patrick, and. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. I've heard it's a uh, fun. It's uh, definitely it's one of the fastest growing sports, especially for old folks. And uh, and uh, you know that would be a lot of fun to be able to say, "Hey, come up and play pickleball up here," you know. So uh, you know, I appreciate everybody's work on that. Oh, I just see. wanted to say too, I'm also really personally very excited about this Buckthorn project. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's such a good example of how we tr or I try to work in Patrick's the same way, where we really want to do all these, but we're going to do them a different way. We're a different community. Um, we're going to find the best way that we can do it and not just throw all of these other things on the taxpayers. So that's just how we work, and Patrick's been wonderful for that. <clears throat> um, just to go on the five-year plan, try to go super quick, uh, we have a GSI. Um, that's we're just trying to outline this is our five-year plan we're trying to outline all of our parks just so we could identify them more we're trying to look for build a bike trail between eaglewood and malibu park um, install diff golf, disc golf in a couple of our uh, different parks we actually have a little more space than i ever expected uh, we're talking about how we can get different play equipment for the villages and unique ways not just go buying them but maybe we could find someone that wants to donate them uh add bathrooms and power to a lot of our different parks i really think we could use that to use them for graduation and stuff that has a lot of things that one's really dynamic that's why it's part of the five-year plan uh browns beach retaining walls there's been a couple questions about that uh we're waiting for the the GMIS system to kind of lay it out for us, then we're hopefully having Kevin could look through that so we could apply for a grant to get that fixed. That's a major priority of ours, but that is absolutely front row. Um, the Pepperfest community, improving the land behind Village Hall. Uh, we're kind of working on what they're work We're waiting for them to see what they're doing that. And then we have a Monarch Garden that we're also going to try to add maybe a shelter to so you can go sit there and stuff like that. But that's just a quick update in our one and five year plan. I always ask if anyone has any ideas to please bring them towards us because, you know, we're only a couple of people and a lot of this stuff is up to us to bring them up to me. So appreciate that i'm sure we've got people with ideas i've seen that from uh, from the earlier campaigns so uh i uh i hope everybody kicks in because uh yeah one of our yeah we have a lot of nice parks and making them nicer is uh is always good for the community so uh that's a uh, it's a uh, something that uh you know we've got uh right people in place i think we're, we're moving ahead you know in a good uh good direction a question for kirk Could, when will um will, when the plan is finalized will it be up on the website yeah um uh i guess what do you mean the plan is finalized well the five-year plan i mean there's a plan that's up there right now that's like a to, to 2019 so when the new plan is done will it go up there so people can take a look at it and get excited because it's uh, yeah, like really nice stuff. We're, yes. We're also tweaking a little bit, this a little bit, and then we'll send it to Melissa to post or that. So yes, um, we're also adding a little stuff because we always meet a little weird for you guys. We meet the first Thursday after you, but the answer to your question is yes. Uh, once we finalize this, the tweaks of it, Melissa will throw it on the website. Super. Those are great plans. I really exciting ideas. Thank you. 
And just an FYI for everybody with the website, I know Melissa is getting really close to having a, a new uh, updated version of the website that, uh, you know, for the village that's uh, hopefully going to be more user friendly and a little, uh, you know, actually have pictures of the village in it rather than uh, stuff that the, uh, the, the web builders uh, put up there for us. So uh, that's coming along. And, and I think we're uh, getting real close on that. Is that correct? Yeah, some kind of meeting via telephone with the um, the designer on Friday to review some of the options she gave us. So, yep, we're getting closer. Thank you. And let's see, that's done with public welfare, public parks. And now uh, the board may convene into closed session. Okay, we are now back in open session <coughs> at the... Uh, 921 uh and we need a motion uh, on uh, Stan, make just... Sure, let's just make sure the video is recorded it is it's it it's, it's on okay. it's on. perfect thank you upper left hand corner Stan, i move to uh send the authorized red line version back to our village attorney um from the water service agreement we received from hudson thank you tim there a second second Thank you, Kirk. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. And Amy's shaking her head. She's ready for this to end, too. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so uh, uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, Melissa, send that stuff out. And uh, I don't believe there's anything else that we need to address, so I will uh, – Adjourn the meeting at 9.22. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry, Mary and Amy, that uh, we didn't used to last this long, and it's not your fault. There's just a lot of good stuff going on in the village, and uh, and as we always try to do, we're protecting our, uh, our taxpayers and our residents. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for your uh, great participation again tonight. And... Uh, We'll see you the next time, as they say, a quick trip. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Toodaloo.